So I woke up Thursday morning, okay. I took about three steps and like felt like my lower back just like dropped. It's like, oh. Really? Like my back just went out. This hasn't happened to me in two and a half years. Oh, wow. So since I've been studying Alexander Technique, I've had much less trouble with my back. My back used to go out on me a couple of times a year. And, and when it go out, I basically have to lie down the whole day, go see a chiropractor. And, and so it was expensive and uh, you know, severely cut into my productivity. Okay. Um, there was one relief for it. I remember this one time I had a bad back and I still stumbled out on a date with my girlfriend. Then we came home afterwards and she said, no, we probably shouldn't do anything because you got a bad back. <laughs> so, <laughs> but my love for Here her, we go. Here we go. He said he wanted to talk about himself. But it didn't take more than 20 seconds to find out what, it, what he's doing. He's going to tell us a sex story. Go. So my love and affection and desire to get close with her. Oh, my, my lower back. It's so strong. that I said, no, 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 dear. You just, like, you just clamber on top of me. And I found like the gentle way she rode me, it kind of helped warm and loosen up my lower back so that it felt much better afterwards. But as I'm not in a relationship now, as I'm constrained by God's eternal and immutable and universal moral law, I didn't have that opportunity, so my, my back problem's still with me. But yeah, it was humiliating. Here I am an Alexander Technique teacher, so I immediately thought, now what am I doing? And my physical therapist about two years ago gave me this exercise where I like tied this belt around my ankles and then I like try to push out okay. to like strengthen my legs and then I tie it around my knees and try to push out. And I think I overdid that or I did it poorly so that I was compressing my lower back and then it just like gave out on me. So that was that was discouraging enough. So I had some painkillers left over from my surgery about nine months ago and so I woke up at about 4 a.m. Friday morning and took a couple of them and, uh, and that seemed to help but then when I got up I was like really nauseous. So I'm not sure if I was supposed to eat food with the painkillers, or if it was like I didn't sufficiently wash the tangerines the night before, but I ended up just like vomiting much of Friday, which whenever I start a vomiting fit, I can't keep anything down, so I get really dehydrated, which is you know fairly dangerous for you. Okay. So I'm like vomiting through Friday, can't keep anything down, getting increasingly dehydrated, like Shabbat comes, like I feel like I'm dying. You know, I'm just so dehydrated, you know, can't keep down a mouthful of water. Like, I want to, like, you know, like, crawl over to the people next door and say, you know, help me. Uh, you know, I just always feel like I'm dying whenever I get, you know, any kind of stomach nausea where I, where I can't keep anything down. How do you know what this was? I don't. Okay, so what do you think it was? I think it was either a reaction to the painkiller because I didn't take it with food, or I think it was food poisoning because I didn't sufficiently wash the tangerines. Like I remember, I was eating a couple of tangerines that were like starting to go bad. And so like I, I think I avoided those parts, but maybe I still got some of the. Okay, can I say something? Yeah, I'll interject, and then you just keep going with your story. Let me let me let me explain you something, my son. People who are vegetarians don't get food poisoning. Food poisoning comes. Men get food poisoning from eating meat. Meat has food poisoning, okay? Things that have been uh, animals, things that come from animals, like maybe eggs, but more likely meat and fish and chicken, that's where your food poisoning comes from. You're a vegetarian. No one ever got food poisoning from almonds and bananas and applesauce. Thank you for that episode. <laughs> That's why I didn't call you. I just, I just want to clarify. That's why I asked you, where did you get that from? Because if you're going to tell me, well, I may have had a stomach flu, or maybe it was a reaction to the pills, okay, I, I understand that. But don't, don't give me the food poisoning. Let's rule that out. Go ahead. So whenever I have a severe illness or I get really sick, I, it's primarily a time of personal and moral reevaluation for me. I always see with like the most painful and startling clarity all the ways that I've deviated from her. Like all the ways that I've been a bad person. Like that just like hangs on me whenever I feel like I'm dying. Okay. Like whenever I'm really sick. So you know this time I, I resolve, okay, the people I respect in my life, I want to listen to them twice as deeply. I want to like reduce my defenses to what they have to say because I kind of 
Now, when I was sick, I kind of looked at all the main criticisms that my dis disinterested critics have said. Like some of my critics, you know, just you have critics, not cases, but many <laughs> of the people who criticize the things I've done, they're like fully sane, you know, very responsible, upright, you know, godly, and, and thoughtful people. And so when I get sick, I think, oh man, they are so right. They are so right. I've got to like, you know, I've really got to change the the moral direction of my life. And I. I kind of like, I see that I've like thrown away my life, like seeking self-aggrandizement, like I'll, I'll do something on Facebook or on my blog and I think, oh, I'm so edgy and amusing and, you know, I'm so funny or my insights are so witty or, you know, I'm so brave to write that. But then when I get sick, I think, man, that was just like narcissism. That was just self-aggrandizement. I'm just like throwing away my life on delusions. Like here I am, I'm 45, I feel like I'm dying. I'm all alone in a hovel, you know, which I'm going to lose in the next 30 days. You know, headed for financial oblivion. It's like, okay, maybe I need to start doing some things differently. So I don't know, what do you have any certain repetitive thoughts when you get really sick? Uh, I can re re I, I can empathize, relate. I don't know what the word is. You, you don't know the word empathy. No, that's not in my vocabulary. Okay. Um, being single sucks, okay? Anyone who tells you that being single is, is, is a good thing, they're really happy being single, is either lying to themselves, lying to you, or both. Being single sucks. And you know where it really shows up its ugly face? When you get sick. Because yeah. when you get sick, and you're like really bedridden, you know, it's like you don't want to get out of bed or nothing, and there's nobody around to help you, then <laughs> you're fucked. You're really fucked because you got to go to the doctors to get any help, but you're too weak to even move. Okay? So, like, someone's going to have to come and pick you up and put you in the car to get, who? Who? Nobody likes you. You've written all these terrible things on your blog about everybody. You made videos making fun of everybody. You know, you know your East Coast friends hate you because you made fun of them because they're, you know, so wimpy about their little, little disasters. You made fun of them. They hate you now. You know, you made fun of the liberals, the liberals are all hurt and they're crying, boo-hoo, you know. You made fun of the Jews, you called the Jews names, you picked on them all the time. Jews aren't going to help you. You just trash the Goyim, the Goyim aren't going to help you, right? Like, who's left? You know, it's like your partner from you, from, from, from your partner from the Torah talks, <laughs> he ain't helping you. <laughs> Not after tonight, you know, like, you're fucked, okay? Well, okay, anyone who's single gets sick, they're fucked. Why do you think old people... When they, you know when they get old, you know what they do? They move in with their kids. You know why? Because when they get sick, they don't want to be fucked anymore. Okay? My, my uncle fell out of bed, got tangled up in a sheet, and was caught there, like between his bed and the wall, for like two or three days. I hate it when that happens. And, until Seriously, I hate it when like that happens. Like a neighbor found him. Like he, he was just like stuck there. <laughs> and what's funny about that? Because <laughs> I have no empathy. You already know. Like, oh, yeah. And I remember once when I was bedridden by chronic fatigue syndrome, I was living with my parents. My parents were, were gone. And I got up out of bed in the middle of the night. My back went out and I like fell to the floor. And I could not get up. And so we lived in like a remote area. Did, like, you, did you have food poisoning from, a, uh, from an apple that night? <laughs> Go ahead. You're really a horrible person. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. So don't mind me. So everyone in this development, they lived on about seven acres. So you know, people were far away. You know, my window was open. It was like 3 a.m. and I'm stuck on the floor. I can't move. My back's gone out. And uh, you know, I'm yelling, "Help me! Help me! Help me!" No one heard me. Eventually, I was able to 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 get to get up and go back to bed. But I was just like, you know, how frightening that is to be you know fall to the ground be unable to get up and there's no one who can hear you to help you. Oh, that's why you get you get those, um, that's what the commercial, I, uh, I, I've fallen, I can't get up. Right, right, so what, right. What are those things called? Those emergency uh, walkie-talkie things? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've fallen down and I can't get up. That, that commercial is for people like that. 